Hey, welcome to part two of our Telling the Time to the Five Minutes activity. If you haven't already, go check out part one. There's a card in the top right hand corner right now coming your way. We'll go start at the link in the description. You'll need that first. In this tutorial, we'll be putting the finishing touches on our clock, as well as using Scratch to code it up. So let's go pick it up where we left off. Alright, I've got the Makey Makey down here and I've remapped all the keys on the back of the Makey Makey. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check the card in the top right corner right now to go check out the other videos that got us to this point. You'll also see some cables coming out from the back of the Makey Makey. I'm just going to zoom in to give you a better look. Alright, so these cables connect to the key presses of the back of the Makey Makey. And what we'll do is we will connect the alligator cables to the jumper cables that are attached to the clock. And that's how we're going to hook up all the buttons. Now for my hours makey makey, I've remapped the keys on the left side to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the keys on the right side to 7, 8, 9, 0, U and Y. And I've done something a little bit different for the minutes makey makey as well. It's totally okay if you've remapped them differently, you really just need to keep track of where you're at. Cool, let's jump over to Scratch and code this beast up. Over here in Scratch, I've just got an empty project and I've just gone ahead and Googled clock face and just grabbed an image to put on the stage. We won't actually be using this image, but I just thought it'd be nice to have a clock face there. The first thing I want to do is map each of the keys of the Makey Makey to a spot on the list. What does that mean? Let's go over to the variables category. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to create a new list and we're going to call this one minutes. Cool. You'll see here as I bring up the Makey Makey, that I've mapped all the buttons to various positions. So this will be the spot on the clock where the number one is, the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this will be o'clock. In each spot in the list, I'm going to put the corresponding letter. So in the first spot of the list, I'll put the letter W. So when we hit a W key press, I know that that's mapped to the number one. So over here in Scratch, I'm just going to put the letter W in this slot one, A, S, D, F, G. I recommend that you just put them in a nice neat order. Cool, now I've got all my 12 spots filled. I'm gonna do the same thing for the hours. So jumping over to making a new list, I can go hours. I'm gonna use the same spots for the hours, but I've changed the different keys. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, U and Y. Over here in Scratch, I'm just gonna enter that in now. So one's gonna mean one, two, and Y. So now I've got all these spots of my hours and all the spots of my minutes. So let's say, for instance, I hit the letter U on the keyboard, then that's going to look up position 11. What I'm going to do now is create a custom block, and it's going to be called set minutes. So we have set minutes here. And what set minutes is going to do, it's going to have 12 different if statements to check if the current key is pressed down. Cool, so I've got my if statement here, if the W key is pressed. If we look over here onto the stage, that's where we've got this first spot. We want the minutes to be mapped to number 1. So what we can do is create a variable here. I'm going to call it minutes key. Then we can set the minutes key to the item number of the thing we're looking for. Well, the thing we're looking for is the letter W. So if I type the letter W and I change this to minutes, we should get the number one. And we do. If I change this to K, for instance, K is number nine. If I click this, we should get the number nine. Boom, exactly what we're after. So we'll leave it as W and then we'll set that inside. We've got our block of code that accounts for position one. We need to repeat this for the rest of them. So I'm just going to go through and duplicate these now for each other spot. Cool, so I've gone ahead and I've entered in all those values for the minute key. I just renamed it to minute key to get rid of the plural there. Now if I press keys on the keyboard at the moment, nothing's going to happen because nothing is currently calling set minutes. So we need to change that. I'm going to say when the green flag is clicked forever, we want to set minutes. So let's click the green flag and now when I press say A on the keyboard, we get the number two. So this is this would be at the second slot here. If we type F on the keyboard, we should get the number five. Boom, and that's how it works. We're gonna do the same thing for the hours. See if you can have a crack at it first. All right, so I've gone ahead and created a new function called set hours, and instead of setting the minute key, we've got an hour key here. So I've just created a new variable called hour key. And I just went through and I populated all the values to match what they should be. So when we press the one key, we will turn item one of the hours list and so forth. The last thing that we need to do is inside of our forever loop, we also need to call set hours. So let's go test this out. I'll hit the number four and there we go. Our hour key is now number four. Let's hit the letter Y and it's 12. So all is well. 
Now that we have our keys working, we want to say the time. So we're going to use the text to speech extension. So click down the extensions in the bottom left hand corner and find the one that says text to speech. And we get a few blocks here. The first one that we're going to drag out is a speak block. And if we click this now, hello, it says hello. We're going to change this to the time is because remember our clock wants to tell us what the time we can duplicate this. The time is the time is cool. So we want to combine the current hours with the current minutes. Well, we've already set the hour and the minute key. So our job is pretty simple. Let's go over to the operators and drag out a couple of join blocks. We're going to put the hour in first because usually you'll see the hours. And then we're going to put in the second join block. We're going to put in a space and then we want to put in the minutes, but the minute key doesn't refer to the minutes. Can you think of a way how we can use this value to mention the minutes? Did you guess it? You can use the multiplication operator. Still stuck? Drag in the minute key and all you need to do is multiply it by five. Drag it back in and it should work. So right now, if I click this, we'll get the hour, space, and then the minutes time five. So 1225. And that makes sense because five times five is 25 and 25 minutes would be here on the clock. We can get this and drag it inside of our speak blocks and let's listen to it. The time is 1225. So that's pretty cool. The last thing that we need to do is attach this to a space key press. So now when I press the space key, it will tell the time. The time is 1225. Awesome. Now there is a minor bug with this. If we set the minutes to 60 minutes, it's going to tell us that the time is 60 minutes. So I'm going to leave that up to you to problem solve that. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to do, but I just want you to be aware of this current bug. The time is 1260. Now that we have our Scratch project set up, it's time to go grab the Makey Makey and hook up all the alligator cables to the jumper cables and get our clock working. All right, so this is where things are going to start to get a little bit funky and crazy. So I've got the clock here and remember it goes in anti-clockwise direction. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all the way back to 12. 12's here at the top. So we're going to be getting both of our makey makeys. So here I've got an hours makey makey just by signal that by a little post-it note. And I've also got a minutes makey makey here that I haven't yet plugged in. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working probably on the inside first because that seems the most logical for me. And then I'll hook up the minutes around the outside. Now here's where I'm hoping that you've gone in and you've tagged your cables. So you don't have to like try and figure out well, which one means which. So you can see here with my green cables, I've got, I know this cable is referring to the first hour. I know this cable is referring to the second hour and this one, the third. And I think this one here is the 12th hour, which is cool. So I know that the 12th hour, there it is right there. Now, if I just bring our little graphic here of our remapping, I know that here are the hours on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side in all of our slots. I can put the Makey Makey directly on here and I can use this to help me. I'll just zoom in here just so you can get a better look. The first jumper cable spot refers to the number one. The hours are nice and neat, so one maps to one. All I need to remember is just getting this red one here because that's the one that's in the top spot. Then what I want to do is find my alligator cable that has, that has the first hour on it. So hour one is going to connect to the red cable. And all I need to do is connect them like that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other cables. So the next color in line is this brownie color. And I'm just gonna separate that out and then connect it up. I'm gonna do that for all the hours and all the jumper cables. While you're doing this, it might be a good idea to push up the rubber sleeves of the alligator cables, so that way they don't connect with the other jumpers. Cool, it's looking a little messy, but all the cables are now hooked up. I recommend before proceeding, you actually jump over to Scratch and you make sure that this is working. All right, so I've got our clock here set up. And what we're gonna do now is that I've connected the hands to the ground, as you can see here in the Makey Makey. And as I rotate the hour hand, and I think my hour hand is actually a little bit small, but if we check out Scratch, you'll see that the hour key will change. So here we go. I'm going to move the hour hand. This should be the third hour. So if I move the hand, boom, it is now three hours on Scratch. If I move it up here, we should get two. We should be able to get right around. I can see my 11 and 12 are back to front. I can easily fix that up. And let's go right around to test. So there's nine, eight, seven, and six. So just my 11 and 12, they're around the other way. Now I want you to go ahead and do the exact same thing, but for all the minute locations. So that will be connecting all the alligator cables to the jumper cables of the second Makey Makey. 
Now that I've got all my hour hands synced up, I'm just gonna get all the cables. So that's the green ones, these orange ones here, and these white ones for me. And I'm just gonna group all of them together. Got a bit of tape, and I'm just gonna wrap them all together just to try and create some order amongst all this kind of wide chaos here. There we go. All right, cool. So I've gone ahead and I've hooked up all the minutes around the edge as well. One thing to note is that you have to connect both Makey Makeys to the ground. You can easily just run one alligator cable from one Makey Makey to another Makey Makey's ground. Simple. Okay, let's bring up the scratch screen and now I'm gonna move the minute hand and watch the minutes update on the screen. So here we are on 12. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got a bit of a bug there, there's 11. 9, 10, 11. So we just had a bit of a bug over here with our number seven. So we'll have to go and inspect that one. But largely all is well. All right, that bug was squashed. You just need to make sure that the alligator cable to the jumper cable connections aren't colliding with each other. In other words, they could be triggering a different button press if they're touching. If we go here and we actually position our hands to where they should be, you'll see here, the time should be quarter past six. The time is 6.15. And it is. Now you know, with an actual clock, that we'd want our, our hand slightly rotated ahead of the six. But we will skip over that minor detail here. If we were to program the clock on scratch, we could definitely program that one in. The last step in this process, and I highly recommend it, is to hide all of your wiring behind some other cardboard. I quite like using pizza boxes, but hey, you might want to make a class clock and you could use a giant piece of cardboard as well. All you need to do is cut out a hole and place your clock into it. And there you have it. There's all the wiring of the clock that's behind as well, just stuck down with a few bits of tape and it's pretty nice how we've organized these cables already. You could definitely make this neater than I have. I'm just uh, yeah, showing you this as an idea. And there you have it. That's how you make a makey makey clock. The time is 4.30. Hey, thanks for checking out this Makey Makey project on clocks and telling time to the nearest five minutes. If you're digging this content, then smash that like button. And if you're an educator, consider joining the Surfing Scratcher mailing list, link below in the description. Got plenty more projects coming your way, but until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.